Hi, I'm Fernando, and today we continue talking about constraint-based analysis. In the last class, we saw a type of constraint-based analysis called control flow analysis. Today, we look into another kind of constraint-based analysis, perhaps the most well-known of all of them, pointer analysis. Pointers are a cornerstone of imperative programming. By passing pointers around, we avoid having to copy big chunks of data. However, pointers make it very hard for the compiler to optimize code. I will show some examples that explain what, um, why that's so. Let's start with this rather simple and artificial program. Can you stop the video and then think about the questions on the, on the right side of the figure? Well, if we compile this program with GCC-01, we see that the program is simply storing 13 into the stack and printing it. 7, the first assignment in the program, never really happens. In other words, GCC could understand that the assignment at pointer P is really killing the assignment at int i. In other words, the compiler knows that star P and i refer to the same memory location. That's nice, because these two names have different syntax, and syntactically, there is nothing really that relates them. So the question is, how does the compiler know that these two names refer to the same memory location. Before we answer this question, let's look into another program. This time we have here a very simple loop that copies memory around, but only the non-zero memory cells. Look at this program. Could you vectorize it? Vectorization is a kind of parallelization. We will be replacing simple operations with operations that process several pieces of data at the same time, in parallel. In other words, could you, you parallelize this loop? What about avoiding the double store into R of i? There is one store here and another store here. Could you avoid this double store? This last optimization, avoiding the double store in R of i, is not hard. We could transform the program to look like this code in the bottom of the figure. But is it safe to do this optimization? Well, once you perform this optimiza optimization, we enable vectorization. If we compare the running time of both pro uh, programs, the vectorized code is more than four times faster. If you want to test it by yourself, you can try using this driver. But remember, such gains depend on the compiler and on the machine that you are experimenting with. The driver itself is available in the course web page if you want to try it yourself. And if you want to look into the assembly code that I had, it's here. The optimized code is on the bottom. You can see how the assembly differs between original and optimized program. Anyways, we will not dive into this code, but you can go back and look at it later if you want. But the interesting thing is that we had to perform that uh, optimization by hand. In other words, GCC-01 is not by itself able to carry out this optimization. In other words, the double store remains there even if we optimize this program with GCC-03. Well, at least today in 2019, I guess in the future the store, uh, the story can be different. But what's the problem for GCC in, uh, in 2019? Which kind of information does it need to be able to optimize this program? The gist of the question here are pointers. We have two points um, pointers to integers p and r, and the first program contains two updates to r. But if b and r could point to the same memory region and that p 
possibly might be true, actually, then the optimization would be wrong. We would be eliminating a side fact on B if we elide this first store here. At this point, I suggest you to stop the video and think about why the possibility of B and R pointing to the same place restricts optimization. In other words, the handmade optimization is not really safe. And to discover this kind of possibilities, that is, pointers pointing to the same place, we have what's called pointer analysis. The traditional implementation of pointer analysis is based on conditional constraints, and as we had seen in the last class, solving this kind of algorithm is cubic on the program size. Anyways, pointer analysis is one of the most well-known compilation techniques, and we shall be talking about it today. One interesting question is why data flow analysis is not enough to solve pointer analysis. To explain why, we shall use this program on the left. Let's try to find out the memory regions associated with pointers v0, v1, and v2. In this program, we have two memory regions, which we have called malloc1 and malloc2. If we try to interpret this program abstractly, we start by observing that malloc1 can be pointed to by v0. And then we have that malloc2 can be pointed to by v2. And then at line 5, we have that anything pointed to by v0 might point to whatever v2 references. Notice that line 5 is creating relations between malloc1 and malloc2. But these two variables do not exist synthetically at an L5. But after we process line 5, we see that the facts known about malloc1 have changed. And in this case, when we analyze line 2, we see that we are transferring the information from the set of things that malloc1 points to the set of things that v1 points to. Notice that the evaluation of line 5 bears influence on line 2. However, there is nothing linking line 5 and line 2, at least synthetically. They refer to completely different names. That's why simple data flow analysis would not re really be good here. Data flow analysis relies on the program syntax to create relations within the program. In other words, the transfer of information is guided by the syntax of the program. But here, the syntax only is not enough to determine the relations that really matter. And that's why we need more expressive constraints than those seen in data flow analysis. In the next class, we shall introduce these constraints, looking into an algorithm that is called Andersen's analysis. So there, feel free to write me with questions or suggestions. Thank you.